Hello, welcome to Learning Studio. This video is about Kuhn and Popper's concept of science comparatively, which will make you understand the differences and similarities about their views. If you want to know about the full views of Kuhn and Popper about science, watch the videos on our channel. Link is available in the description box down below. Let's start this video. A major source of disagreement between Kuhn and Popper concerns Kuhn's concept of normal science. As we have seen, Kuhn says that once a paradigm has been accepted, most scientists busy themselves with research projects dictated by the paradigm, that is, doing normal science. For Popper, what Kuhn called normal science is not science at all. Scientific problems are not like puzzles because there are no restrictions either on what counts as a solution or on what procedures can be followed in solving a problem. According to Popper, scientific problem solving is a highly imaginative, creative activity. Nothing like the puzzle solving described by Kuhn. Furthermore, for Kuhn, science cannot be understood without considering psychological and sociological factors. For him, there is no such thing as a neutral scientific observation. Observations are always made through the lens of a paradigm. In Papirian science, such factors are foreign, problems exist, and proposed solutions either pass the rigorous attempts to refute them or they do not. Thus, Kuhn's analysis of science stresses convention and subjective factors and Popper's analysis stresses logic and creativity. Deanne Robinson suggests that the views of both Kuhn and Popper may be correct. In a conciliatory spirit, we might suggest that the major disagreement between Kuhn and Popper vanishes when we picture Kuhn as describing what science has been historically, and Popper asserting what it ought to be. However, it should be noted that there is a basic difference between Popper's and Kuhn's philosophies of science. Popper believed that there are truths about the physical world that science can approximate. In other words, Popper accepted the correspondence theory of truth. Kuhn, on the other hand, rejected this theory, saying instead that the paradigm accepted by a group of scientists creates the reality they explore. For this reason, Kuhn was led to the radical view that truth itself is relative to a paradigm. Other philosophers of science claim that any attempt to characterize science is misleading. For them, there is no one scientific method or principle. And any description of science must focus on the creativity and determination of individual scientists. In this spirit, the illustrious physicist Percy W. Bridgman said that scientists do not follow any prescribed course of action. Science is what scientists do and there are as many scientific methods as there are individual scientists. In his book Against Method, Outline of an Anarchistic Theory of Knowledge, Paul Feyerabend aligned himself with those philosophers of science who claim that scientists follow no prescribed set of rules. In fact, he said that whatever rules do exist must be broken in order for scientific progress to occur. Feyerabend summarized this position as follows. My thesis is that anarchism helps to achieve progress in any one of the senses one cares to choose. Even a law and order science will succeed only if anarchistic moves are occasionally allowed to take place. For nobody can say in abstract terms without paying attention to idiosyncrasies of person and circumstances. What precisely it was that led to progress in the past? And nobody can say what moves will succeed in the future. In his book Farewell to Reason, Feyerabend continued his anarchistic description of science, there is no one scientific method, but there is a great deal of opportunism. Anything goes, anything, that is, that is liable to advance knowledge as understood by a particular researcher or research tradition. In practice science often oversteps the boundaries some scientists and philosophers try to put in its way and becomes a free and unrestricted inquiry. Successful research does not obey general standards. It relies now on one trick, now on another, and the moves that advance it are not always known to the movers. A theory of science that devises standards and structural elements of all scientific activities and authorizes them by reference to some rationality theory may impress outsiders, but it is much too crude an instrument for the people on the spot. That is, for scientists facing some concrete research problem. Even with the revisions suggested by Popper, Kuhn, and Feyerabend, many traditional aspects of science remain. Empirical observation is still considered the ultimate authority. Lawful relationships are still sought, theories are still formulated and tested, and determinism is still assumed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.